for children aged two to five years of old, um, you can do serial play audiometry, which we're going to talk about right now. So at one year of age, the child is still lacking in speech and language development. Around 18 months, the child can start to obey commands, and speech testing can begin at this age, which is an interplay between the audiologist and the child. So you have to be a very engaging audiologist and like children. So it could be easier to condition a child to respond to speech signals. You could say something like, point to your nose. And if the child can you know, follow the directions, that's a great sign. Point to your shirt, show me your mommy. And you could figure out the speech thresholds by having um, raising and lowering your voice as you do this. Speech audiometry. So when a child is very young, the child is not necessarily tested formally. Like I said, you could do imitations if they imitate, they have good hearing or asking them to point and whatnot. Waiting for a response. If you whisper to a two or three year old and they whisper back, that's a good sign. Pure total audiometry could be hard to do with small children. It might be hard to get them to respond. So you have to make it so that it's somewhat fun. Um, but children are also anxious to please, so there could be a lot of false positive responses when you're testing a child aged two to five years old. You could teach the child to do a simple task in response to a sound, so put a block in a bucket. First, the child is conditioned to listen for a tone. The test is first done in sound field in a booth with speakers, and then if the child is cooperating, you can test them with earphones, so you could test one ear at a time. You start at 2,000 hertz and you play. You can do serial play. So the child uses objects to represent their hearing. So here's a picture over there. The child's holding a block to their ear and there's the audiologist playing along. And when the sound, there are two audiologists. So there's one audiologist in a booth and then there's another audiologist running the test. So when the child hears a sound, they're supposed to build up that wall that they're making. The problem with play audiometry is finding suitable rewards for prompting children to maintain interest and motivation so children can get bored easily and motivation can be lost and sometimes it's impossible to get a full test in one visit. Luckily, um, you can bring them twice. Most insurance companies cover two visits to get a full evaluation. Speech detection and awareness thresholds for older children. You could use spawn D words which are used for testing speech recognition threshold. Remember, there are those two-syllable ice cream, airplane. You follow the same procedures that you did for adults, and you count how many right or how many wrong answers there are. The test can be shortened for kids. The SRT, the speech recognition threshold, you want it to agree with the pure tone average or be within 5 dB of each other. Words or pictures are used depending on the age of the child, you could use the WIPI, the Word Intelligibility by Picture ID, or a pointing to picture test, a closed set test. If the child doesn't have the vocabulary or it isn't verbal, you can do these picture pointing tests. There are also word lists that are designed with simpler words for kids. So remember the speech recognition score. Well, there's a phonetically, word, phonetically balanced kindergarten word list to obtain that. You want to double check. Are your pure tone thresholds correct? Does your speech recognition threshold correspond to your pure tone average? We usually don't mask children until the age of four years of old or older because it gets confusing having noise in one ear and listening for a beep in another ear. The MCL and the UCL. We do a similar approach when testing adults, but the most comfortable listening level and the uncomfortable listening level could be harder to perform on children, and they're not done really on children with normal hearing. They will be done on fitting children who are being fit with hearing aids or cochlear implants. There are objective tests. If your child is not cooperating with the subjective tests, you could do OAEs or ABRs. Remember, OAEs are tests of cochlear function, ABRs are tests of the auditory brainstem function. And language disorders, their significant language delay is often caused by hearing loss, genital earlier acquired, symbolic disorders, ADHD, emotional disturbances, or autism. So 
The audiologist's role is to rule out hearing loss as the cause of the language delay.